All right, so are you ready to boost your business strategy vocab? Sounds like a plan. It's kind of like understanding, uh, you know how companies think, right, and how they plan. Yeah. And you can use this stuff in your own life, too. Exactly. We're looking at an article today. It breaks down 22 key terms for business strategy and planning. 22. It's actually designed for English language learners. Oh, cool. But to be honest with you, even native speakers, I think, can get tripped up by this stuff sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's they're used so much, but... Do people really understand them? Right. That's the question. So the article starts out with what it calls core strategy terms. Okay. So like the foundation, right? We've got mission goals, objectives, and then, of course, the strategy itself. It's like a hierarchy. Yeah, it's almost like a hierarchy, right? Yeah, and you can apply it to anything like a big company or even personal projects. Oh, that's interesting. Like imagine planning a big trip. Yeah. So your vision is like where you want to go. Got it. The overall experience you're going for. Okay, so like exploring Southeast Asia for a year. Yeah. That would be like my vision. Exactly. That's your vision. But what would the mission be then? The mission is like the why and the how of your vision. Okay. So maybe for that trip, your mission is to immerse yourself in different cultures or learn new skills or even document your adventures through photography. I like that. Yeah. So it gives like more substance to that vision. Yeah, it gives it some some meat. Yeah. yeah. And this is exactly how companies use these terms. Exactly. So for example, a tech startup, their vision might be a world without digital barriers. Okay. While their mission is something like to develop affordable user-friendly tools that bridge language gaps online. Nice. So it's more specific. Yeah. So then goals, those are the measurable targets that actually mark your progress towards that big vision. Right. Right. They're the things you can measure. Yeah. So, for example, this tech startup that we're imagining, they might set a goal of have translation software integrated into 50% of global social media platforms within five years. Okay, that's a good goal. Ambitious. Yeah, but it's aligned with their vision. But goals, those feel pretty massive. Yeah. How do they actually make it happen? You need to break them down. Yeah. So you break down the goals into smaller, actionable steps. Yeah. And those are called objectives. So like milestones almost. Exactly. So for that 50% integration goal, one objective could be to partner with three major social media companies by the end of next year. Oh, so objectives are like the concrete milestones along the way. Exactly. It's how you get to the goals. But then even with all of this stuff laid out, mm. you still need the how Right. The strategy. You need the strategy. What's interesting to me about strategy is that it's not fixed, right? No, it's constantly changing. It's like it has to adapt to everything that's going on. It does. It has to adapt. So our tech startup, their initial strategy might be to build the best translation software out there. Okay. But then maybe competitor analysis shows that they actually need to focus on marketing. Oh, interesting. To specific regions first. So it's like constantly analyzing what's going on around you. Exactly. The strategy changes based on things inside the business and outside. Yeah, so this is where it gets really interesting because we're not just talking about definitions anymore. No. We're talking about like actual decision making. Yes, real world decision making. Yeah. And this framework, this vision, mission, goals, objectives, strategy, mm -hmm. it's a way to make those decisions more thoughtfully. I see. Whether you're running a company or planning your next big move in life. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've got like our core strategy terms downright. Yes. Now, this article jumps into what it calls analysis and planning vocabulary, mm. which are the tools to help you make those decisions. The tools you need. Yeah. yeah. And the first tool they pull out is the SWOT analysis. Classic SWOT. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. <laughs> everyone's heard of SWOT. It feels like everyone's heard of SWOT, but like actually using it effectively is a different story. Yeah, it's one of those things that's like deceptively simple. Like it seems simple, but you have to really think about it. So what does a good SWOT analysis look like? What makes it more than just a checklist? Yeah. Well, let's say you're a small bookstore yep. um, and you're competing with these online giants. Right. A, a very basic SWOT analysis might say weakness, small marketing budget. Okay. But if you really think about it, the weakness might be that they don't have much of an online presence at all. Oh, yeah. Or they don't do personalized recommendations, which is what those big guys do. Right, right. So you have to think deeper. So the SWAT pushes you to find, like, the root causes. Yes. The root cause, not just what you see on the surface. Not the symptoms. Exactly. Right. Okay. And then for opportunities, it's not just about, like, growing the customer base. Right. Maybe it's targeting really specific interests like local history books or author events. Oh, that's a good idea. 
Things that Amazon can't do. Things that Amazon can't really replicate. Right. I see how a good SWAT can help a business stand out. It helps them differentiate. Yeah. Differentiate themselves, yeah. Okay, so you've analyzed your own situation. Right. How do you know how you measure up the competition, though? Well, that's where benchmarking comes in. Benchmarking, yeah. You can learn from others. What's the point of benchmarking, though? It's about understanding why certain companies or certain strategies are successful. I see. And you don't just copy them. Right. So, for example, let's say you have a food delivery app. Yeah. And you're benchmarking against, like, the biggest one out there. Okay. You might find out that the reason that company is so successful is because their drivers are really happy. And happy drivers make for happy customers. And that makes customers loyal. Yeah. Interesting. So you're not just copying their app features. Right. You're trying to understand the deeper reasons why they're successful. The underlying principles. Exactly. The underlying principles. And then you can try to apply those to your business. Yeah. Makes sense. But to really get your place in the market, you need market research. Okay. And competitor analysis. And those two kind of go together, don't they? Yeah, they do. They both sound like figuring out the market. Well, think of market research as the big picture. Okay. Like you want to know about your customers, yeah. their demographics, what they need. What are the trends? What are the trends? Yeah. Yeah, like the overall landscape of the market. Okay, so market research is like setting the scene? Yes, setting the stage. Okay. And then competitor analysis is like looking at the other actors. Okay. So you're analyzing your competitors, their strengths and weaknesses. Right their pricing strategies, yeah. their marketing, how they present themselves. Okay. It helps you see where they're weak. Where you have an advantage. Yeah, maybe they're missing some opportunities. Interesting. Or maybe they're a threat to you. Right. You have to know. So you can plan accordingly. Yeah. Like that analogy. All of this leads to defining your target audience. Right? Yeah, exactly. The people you want to reach. The people you're trying to sell to. This feels really crucial because like, even if you have the best product, it won't matter if it doesn't reach the right people. That's why you need to define your target audience. Yeah. It helps you with everything. With everything. Yeah, like your message, your product, everything should be geared towards them. It's almost like learning to speak your customer's language. Yeah. You need to understand them. Understand their needs and like what motivates them. Exactly. All right, so we've analyzed ourselves with the SWOT. Yeah. We've learned from others through benchmarking. Right. And we've scoped out the market and the competition. We've done our research. Now we got to turn all this information into action. Time to make it happen. All right, so we've got a plan. We've analyzed the market. Yeah. We know who we're trying to reach. Right. Time to actually make it happen. Yeah, time to execute. This next section, the article calls it Implementation and Monitoring Vocabulary. Okay. Which sounds pretty action-oriented. <laughs> yeah, it's all about putting things into motion. Yeah, and it all starts with milestones and timelines. Classic project management stuff. I love milestones. Yeah. It's like those little victories along the way that keep you motivated. Yeah, those little wins that keep you going. Even for me, like just checking things off my to-do list. Yeah, yeah. It gives me a little boost, you know. For sure. It's the same with big projects. You break it down into smaller pieces. Yeah. Like imagine launching a new product. Yeah. It's this huge goal, right? Feels overwhelming. But you break it down into smaller steps. Yeah. Like the first milestone is finalizing the design. Okay. Then milestone two is like finding a manufacturer. Right. So you're not just thinking about this massive overwhelming goal. It's like climbing a mountain. Exactly. You focus on like the next base camp. Right. You just focus on the next step. Not the peak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't get to the top without getting to those base camps first. And then timelines to keep us on track. Yeah. Timelines are important. It's like the schedule. It tells you when things need to be done. Exactly. It outlines when each task needs to be finished. This feels really essential, like especially when you're working on a team. Oh, yeah. It keeps everyone accountable. Keeps everyone on the same page. Yeah. Make sure everything's moving forward. But sometimes even with milestones and timelines, things get really complex. They do. Projects can get messy. And that's when you need a roadmap, right? Roadmap. Yeah. It's like the big picture view. So it's more than just like a list of tasks. It's like visual. Yeah, it's visual. It shows all the different parts of the project and how they connect. Okay, and this is helpful for the people working on the project, but also for like explaining things to other people. Exactly, like stakeholders. Investors. Yeah. Investors, or just your boss, you know? Yeah, it keeps everyone informed. Everyone knows like where things stand. Exactly, you can see the progress. You know, even with the best laid plans, yeah. things can go off track. Yeah, things happen. If you don't have the resources, right. which brings us to budgeting. Budgeting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the money part. Which is so important. 
It is. It makes sure your project can actually happen. It's about making sure that you don't, you know, overspend in one area. Exactly. And then run out of money for something else important later on. You need to plan your spending. Right. Make sure you have enough for everything. All right. So the project is in motion. Oh. You're working on it. How do we track the progress? Well, that's where metrics come in. Okay, metrics. This is where we get into the data, right? Yeah. This is all about measuring your results. Are we actually succeeding or not? Exactly. You need to know if your strategy is working. So metrics are like quantifiable measures, right? Yes. There are things you can actually measure. Like our website visits up? Yeah. Or our sales meeting our targets? Yeah. Metrics give you the evidence you need to make decisions. To adjust things as you go. Exactly. You might need to change your strategy. I see. So the metrics aren't good. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered planning, implementation, monitoring. Our whole process. Now things get really exciting. Ooh, I'm ready. The article calls this section Advanced Strategy and Growth Vocabulary. Advanced stuff. I like it. All right, let's do it. Let's level up. Okay. First up is synergy. Synergy. Yeah, that word gets thrown around a lot. Yeah. It's... But it's often misused. So what does synergy actually mean? It's not just about teamwork. Yeah. It's about things working together to create something bigger. So more than just like one plus one equals three. Exactly. It's like yeah. one plus one equals five. Can you give me a real world example? Yeah, sure. Think about when Disney bought Pixar. Oh, yeah. Back in 2006. Okay. Separately, they were both doing really well. Yeah, they were. But together, they became a huge force in animation. Wow. Disney had the resources and the distribution. Right. Pixar had the creative talent and the technology. Yeah. Together, they made all those hit movies. That neither of them could have done alone. Exactly. That synergy. It wasn't just adding two things together. It was a unique combination. Yeah, they created something totally new. Okay, so we got synergy working for us. Right. What's next? Next is value proposition. Okay, value proposition. This is how you attract customers. Right. It's what makes you different from everyone else. What does it mean, though? It's a clear statement that explains why your product or service is better. It's more than just listing features. Yeah, it's about the benefit. Right. Like how you solve the customer's problem. Exactly. And why they should choose you over everyone else. Okay, so a good value proposition answers the question, Yeah. why should I buy from you? Exactly. Think about Tesla. Okay. They don't just sell electric cars. Right. They're selling like a vision of the future. Yeah, like sustainable transportation cutting edge technology. Right. It's aspirational. Yeah. They're not just selling a product. They're selling an idea. Yeah, whole experience. Okay, so you've got your synergistic team. Right. You've got your killer value proposition. We're doing good. Who do we need to think about now? Your stakeholders. Okay, stakeholders. These are all the people who are affected by your company. So, like employees. Yeah, employees, customers, investors, suppliers, even the community. Okay, so it's like taking a step back and realizing your business is part of a bigger system. Exactly. You can't just think about profits. You have to think about the impact you're having. On everyone. And speaking of profits. Yeah. We can't forget about return on investment. ROI, classic business term. Yeah. This is all about measuring how effective your investments are. Right. So are we actually getting a return? Exactly. Are you getting more out than you're putting in? Yeah. That's what ROI tells you. That's like a key metric for evaluating. Yeah. If your ROI is high, it means things are going well. Your investment is paying off. Exactly. You're making money. So a company might calculate ROI on a marketing campaign yeah, by comparing the cost of the campaign to the new customers they got. Right. You see how much money you made from that campaign? And if it's more than you spent, then it was a good investment. Exactly. That's a good ROI. Okay, what about market penetration and diversification? Those are two different growth strategies. Okay, so market penetration, that's about increasing your share of the existing market. Right, so you're already in a market. Yeah. And you want to get a bigger piece of it. Okay, so it's like squeezing as much as you can out of the market you're already in. Exactly. Like imagine a coffee shop. Okay. They launch a loyalty program. Oh, yeah, to get people to come back more often. Yeah, and to steal customers from the other coffee shops. Okay. That's market penetration. And then diversification is about spreading the risk. Exactly. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Right. So you expand into new markets. Yeah, or offer new products or services. So... Our coffee shop, yeah, they could diversify by adding pastries. Yeah, that's a good one. Or opening another location. Yeah, in a different neighborhood. Okay, so it's about not relying on just one thing. Exactly. You want to have multiple streams of income. Multiple options. Yeah, multiple ways to grow. And finally, we arrive at the business model. 
The big one. Yeah, this is like the overall plan. Yeah, it's the foundation of the whole business. It's how a company creates, delivers, and captures value. Right, it's the blueprint for how they make money. This is fascinating. We've covered so much today. I know, it's a lot. From like the basic terms to these advanced strategies. It's all connected. Yeah, it's amazing how interconnected it all is. Yeah. What's really cool is that these concepts aren't just for business people. No, not at all. Anyone can use them. Anyone who wants to be more strategic. In their life, in their yes, work. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. So here's a final thought for our listeners. Okay. Look at the businesses you interact with every day. Okay. What are their business models? Yeah. What's their value proposition? Good questions. How do they use metrics? Think about it. When you start to look at the world through this business lens. Yeah. You see things differently. You really do. You start to understand how things work. Yeah. And maybe you even spot some opportunities. Yeah, who knows? You might have a brilliant idea. That no one else has thought of. Exactly. Keep those business brains engaged, everyone. Stay curious. Until next time. Bye.